Ladies and gentlemen, Gerard Merluso from NetApp. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. This is the final stretch, so kind of kind of bear with us. This is uh, so. Thanks. Uh, this this is kind of like the commercials during the NFL game, so kind of you know hang tight. So, and and Steve, when uh, Letterman you know uh, uh, retires, you can kind of take his job over. So, but uh, <laughs> um, so the next slide, please. Well, you, you've done all the oh, I'm doing the advancing. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so NetApp is is basically on the right hand side, a big company, lots of revenue, lots of employees worldwide. Um, what I'd like to focus you on this slide is. There's two product lines now within NetApp. One is the FAS product line, which is a NAS-based product line, and the other is an E-Series product line. Um, and the E-Series product line, a little bit of background on it, is new to NetApp. It's not a new product line. Um, NetApp, in May of last year, acquired the Ingenio Storage Systems Division from LSI, uh, which is where I came from. Um, and there we were uh, a supplier of external storage systems for more than 20 years. We developed RAID back in 1989, or, or give or take. Uh, but we've always sold it through OEMs, OEM partners, very important partners from, I, you can see the list, IBM, Dell, Cray, SGI, Quantum. We're, we're pleased to work with those companies and still work with all those companies. Um, and we take the product line to the marketplace, both for the high-performance computing and the general-purpose computing marketplace. Um, and just over the past three years, we've shipped more than 300,000 systems. So those last two statements together combined are kind of a testimony to the breadth of use for the product line and the demanding applications it goes into and the reliability and the availability of the product line because it just sees a very diverse workload in lots of different environments. So now the E-Series product line is also available under the NetApp brand. So it's the same products. Um, it may be taken to market in, in different configurations by each of the OEM customers. They have the freedom to take it to market to you know whatever way satisfies their requirements. So now we also offer it under the NetApp brand. Um, so within the NetApp brand, we've we've chosen to focus it on various solutions. In the upper left, we have one for the Luster marketplace. We have one that's targeted at, at size and processing uh, for the oil and gas and energy folks. We do media content, we do uh, video, full motion video, that kind of stuff. Um, here's one example. The E-Series e has many products in the family, and this is just one example of a product. In fact, this is the one that's out on the table outside, and it's also the one that the uh, Lawrence Livermore folks spoke about earlier today. So this is the 4U60, and, and all we're trying to show on, on this particular slide is that uh, the family itself is, is a very modular, kind of Lego-like building block family. Each one of the units is a self-contained, you know, high availability RAID storage system or its counterpart JBOD or expansion, expansion JBOD as, as we call it. So all we're showing here for the, for the example in the first column right here is one of those RAIDed storage systems. So that's a 4U enclosure that houses um, up to 180 terabytes. Uh, and, and under luster, we get three gigabytes uh, a second or better of write performance and reads is even better. And then from there, you can scale. So you can scale it by just adding more capacity behind the first unit in the form of more JBODs. So you can, you can add, if you go to the right-hand side of the slide, you can have up to a little bit more than a petabyte behind just a pair of high availability RAID controllers. Uh, but you still have the same bandwidth. But if you want to scale bandwidth, then the second box, the third box, the fourth box, like Lego, you know, Lego building blocks, are just additional RAID storage systems, and you scale both bandwidth and capacity at the same time. So there's multiple members in the family, as I said. You can, you can start as small as you know, 10 terabytes if you want and scale up to very, very large. And, and just earlier this afternoon, we saw Livermore describing um, the Sequoia supercomputer. They use the E5460. And as we heard, they did hundreds of those, and, and they're building a system that's 1,000 gigabytes per second or a terabyte per second and 55 petabytes. So you can go from very small to very large is the, is the point uh, of that slide. And then uh, from a Lustre standpoint, we love Lustre. Um, we, we think it's a great file system, and we thank you guys for attending the conference and, and supporting Lustre and looking at it. So we're members of both OpenSFS and EOFS. EOFS. Uh, we partner with Lamp Cloud when we sell our Lustre solution it comes with Lustre support. We do level one and level two, and we, and we escalate uh, level three to our partners, WAM Cloud, and we close the whole ticket through us so you guys don't have to make two phone calls. And then the open benchmark for Lustre, which was announced at Supercomputing last year, 
um, has actually given way uh, at the moment to the work that SARP was just up here talking about, the, the, the workload characterization effort. So we've temporarily suspended the open benchmark for Lustre work um, pending the outcome of the workload characterization and then, and then we may bring the open benchmark for Lustre back. So thank you very much. If you want to stop by the table later on, I'd be happy to answer questions or my colleagues will. So thank you.